Hi, this is another video in the playlist where we're looking at answers to tough questions. These particular questions are kind of difficult, challenging. They're about grade seven at GCSE. Um, they do take a little bit of working through. This particular one, well, it appeared on the, I think it was the June 2017 AQA paper. Quite tough, quite difficult. Please do stop the video, have a go at the question, compare your solution. Let me know in the comments what you think. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, in this particular video, we're being asked to make this proof that the cosine of PBQ, which is this angle here, so from P to B down to Q again, it's this angle at the very top, is the equivalent to this. So it looks a little bit tricky uh, to work through. However, please do stop the video, have a go at the question, compare your solution. Um, I'll do my best not to move the sheet of paper too much around on the screen, but uh, inevitably it's going to happen. So it might be also useful to take a screenshot as well. OK, so a couple of things with the actual sketch itself. What I need to do, I think, is recognise that AC, which is this line along here, is exactly the same as P. Q. Now I need PQ in order to use that for the cosine. Remember it's the cosine of PBQ. So I need this. This effectively would be A. Okay, so I do need that. I need to find that out. But I also need to recognize that actually the um, distance between A and C here is also the same as the distance between P and Q. They're both equivalent to each other. So actually it gives me a little bit of a way of working this out. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to wholly concentrate on the first triangle, which is A, B, C. I'm not going to worry too much about the larger triangle, just going to worry about A, B, C. So let's have a look at that and see if we can find anything that might be useful to us. OK, so I'm just going to draw A, B, C. Now, what we're told is that the angle ABC is actually 30 degrees. Um, this line along here, I'm going to call this A. OK, it just makes my life a little bit easier and it keeps it in keeping with using the cosine rule, which we're going to write in a few minutes. OK, the other things are is that unfortunately I don't know anything about A, B and B, C other than it's called X. <laughs> OK, so it's X centimetres. All right. So let's have a look at putting this into the cosine formula and see where we end up. So we can write this as A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. OK, so let's plug in a bit of information. Well, B is going to be x squared plus x squared minus 2 times x times x. Now, the cosine of A is the cosine of 30 degrees, which is actually root 3 over 2. So it's just something that you need to remember, I'm afraid. Um, there are various methods and ways of remembering cosines, and I have covered those in previous videos. So please do have a look. I'll try to remember to put a link in this video so you can have a look for yourself. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit, just make it look a little bit easier to deal with. So the first thing is x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. And then I've got minus 2 x times x times root 3 over 2. So actually, I can lose these two 2s, OK? I can just divide through top and bottom by 2, and that means I can lose them. So I can write this as minus x squared root 3. OK, it's still not fantastic, but hopefully it will all work itself out. OK, so now I've got an expression for a squared or a formula. This a squared is this, which I know now is the measurement of this. And if I had these values of x, I'd be able to work out the value of ac. OK, so let's look now at the bigger triangle. The bigger triangle is going to be P, B, Q. And we are told various things about that particular triangle. So let's have a look and see if we can figure out what we can 
make use of. So if I've got P, uh, B, Q, okay, what we're told is that P to B and B to Q is actually 10 centimeters, so I can use that bit of information. Okay, and the other thing which is our own thinking is that AC and PQ are equal to each other, so both are going to be equal to A. Now, if you've been doing these sorts of questions for a little while, you might now want to just stop the video and have a go at this because what I'm basically saying is that I've got an expression here for a squared. I've got this. I'm going to do exactly the same for this a or a squared. And then effectively, I'm going to make the two equal to each other. So that might give you a little bit of a hint as to where to go now with the next bit. OK, so let's have a look and see what we end up with. So I've got a squared equals. And I'm going to write the formula again. OK, always would advocate writing the formula down every single time. The reason you should do that is because it will really, really help with your memory to remember a lot of these formulas and also in the way that you use them. OK, so this time I've got b squared is 10 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 10 times 10. And again, I've got cosine A, but this time, unfortunately, I don't know this angle. It's this angle right at the very top here. I don't know what it is. So I actually have to write that as cosine A. But what I'm going to do is make a note, because I'm going to use this a little bit later on, is that cosine A is actually the same as cosine PBQ. It's PBQ, it's this angle here, it's the same. So this is going to be cosine PBQ. And you need to keep that in mind now, really, as we're working through this. OK, so the next stage really is to tidy this up, just make it look a little bit neater. OK, well, I've got 10 squared, which is 100 plus 100. So that's going to be uh, 200. OK, and then I've got minus 2 times uh, well, 10 times 10 is 100, and 10 times 2 is 200, so that's 200 cosine A. OK, now, as I mentioned before, both of these are equal to A squared, so both of these expressions are equal to each other. So I can write that down. And then really, it's just a case of manipulating it until we get cosine A, which you'll remember is the same as cosine PBQ, as the subject of the formula. OK, so when we've made those two equal to each other, make this the subject. When we've got it as the subject, we should get something like that. OK, so I'm going to work through that. Now, unfortunately, it's probably going to spill over onto the next page. I'll do my best, but unfortunately, it's going to be a little bit tricky uh, with the limited amount of, um, of space I've got. So let's write it out. I've got 2x squared minus x squared root 3, and that's equal to 200 minus 200 cosine a. All right. Now, I need to make this 200 cosine A the subject of the formula. Now, the problem I've got at the moment is it's got this awful minus sign. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over to the left hand side here. I'm going to add it to both sides and I'm going to make it the subject of the formula. 200 cosine A. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. Now, everything else, this um, is going to go onto the right hand side of the formula. So what I'm going to get is going to equal to 200 and it's going to be minus 2x squared and then plus x squared root 3. So what I've done here is I've minus 2x squared from both sides and I've added x squared root 3 to both sides. OK, so still looks a little bit scary canary, but it's getting a little bit closer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to factorise this for x squared. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because if I go back to my original formula, you can see that actually I've got 2 and I've got root minus, well, it will be minus root 3, but I've got that factorised away from x squared. So um, with these sorts of questions, you need to kind of keep referring back to the original question if you can. So let's rewrite this as 200 
cosine a equals, and I'm going to write it as 200 minus x squared, and in brackets I've got 2 minus root 3, because if I take minus x squared and multiply it by 2, I get minus 2x squared, and if I take minus x squared and multiply it by minus root 3, I've got a minus times a minus is a plus. So that becomes plus x squared root 3. All right, so we are getting a little bit closer. And now it's just a case of dividing through by 200. I get 200 minus x squared 2 minus root 3 all divided by 200. And then really just tidying this up until it looks like my original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn over and go to the other side of the sheet and I'll actually rewrite that particular formula again. Okay, so I've got cosine a equals 200 minus x squared 2 minus root 3 all divided by 200. That's exactly the same as it was on the previous bottom of the page. It's this one here. Okay, so hopefully that's okay for you. So let's now look at how we can change this to make it look like our question. Well, if you're dividing by this uh, new, uh, denominator here, then I can rewrite this as being the same as saying cosine a equals 200 divided by 200 minus x squared 2 minus root 3, again, all divided by 200. Okay, well, because effectively that 200 divides both of those. Okay, so 200 divided by 200 is going to be equal to 1. That's great, fantastic. And then really this can just be rewritten as it is in the original question as 2 minus root 3 multiplied by x squared all divided by 200. And actually that's the answer to the question and the proof itself. And this is because... Um, if we like a equals angle p b q and that would be the answer to that question okay so a little bit tricky hope it's been useful to you please do add a comment below this was uh, about five marks i think in a gcse question i can't quite remember now um but uh, please do add a comment below i'll always come back to you and i look forward to seeing you inside the next video